Recessions and Stocks, What History Tells Us Welcome back to another episode. If you enjoy this type of content, then subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on any of our latest and greatest uploads. Please keep in mind that we are not certified financial advisors. We simply provide informative and educational videos. Please do your due diligence when investing. How a Recession Affects the Stock Market Rising interest rates, inflation, and commodity prices are historical signs of an oncoming recession. But the market isn't seeing any of those yet. The stock market typically continues to decline sharply for several months during a recession. What is a recession and how do equity markets respond to recession indicators? One common definition is two calendar quarters with negative real GDP. According to the National Bureau of Economic Research NBER, recession is defined as a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy, lasting more than a few months, normally visible in real GDP, real income, employment, industrial production, and wholesale retail sales. A History of Recessions According to the NBER, there have been seven official U.S. recessions since 1969. Recession indicators have been flashing over the past few months, and investors are wondering when will the next recession arrive. Despite the obvious importance of this question, it is impossible to predict this with accuracy and consistency. But we can look back on history to help. We are now in the longest expansion recorded since the end of the Great Recession, and many feel that the expansion is long in the tooth and overdone. History shows us that recessions have occurred for many reasons, but typically are the result of imbalances built up in the economy that need to be corrected. These include rising interest rates, inflation and commodity prices, as well as anything that hurts corporate profits, which may trigger higher unemployment. However, we currently are not seeing these issues. Interest rates are near all-time lows, inflation is muted, and unemployment is near the lowest in history, so why the fear? Yield Curve Etc. First and foremost is the inversion of the yield curve or the difference between the yield on 10-year and 2-year U.S. government bonds. Every instance of the yield on the 2-year exceeding that of the 10-year has signaled an impending recession. However, the timing is questionable. Additionally, a closely monitored index known as the Purchasing Managers Index, which is a leading indicator of economic trends in the manufacturing and service sectors, just flashed a warning as it slipped into contraction territory. The latest reading pointed to the weakest pace of expansion in the manufacturing sector since September 2009, as new export orders fell at the quickest pace in 10 years, mainly due to the impending trade war and tariff situation. Equity Markets Response So, how do equity markets respond to recessions? Stock prices are influenced by many factors. One key issue is the strength or weakness of the underlying economy. When the economy is strong, consumer and business spending increases and corporate profits improve. Greater profits support higher stock prices. Conversely, when economic activity slows, spending declines, profits are reduced and stocks fall. The stock market typically continues to decline sharply for several months during a recession. It historically bottoms out approximately six months after the start of a recession and usually starts to rally before the economy picks up. Not all stocks behave the same during a recession or periods of economic decline. History shows that consumer staples and utilities fare the best because they typically pay higher dividends than stocks in other sectors. Additionally, growth stocks may be the least attractive as they are typically more volatile and tend to trade more directionally with the overall market. How Stocks Performed During the Past Six Recessions Stock markets have been gyrating wildly as the world's leaders close massive portions of the global economy in response to COVID-19. It's safe to say that a global recession has begun and that the U.S. is also in a recession. Moreover, fear has risen as investors attempt to understand what this could mean to their portfolios. Could stocks lose as much as they did in 2008? It's quite possible. What can we learn from past recessions to help this time? Plenty. To address these issues, we will examine stock performance during the past six U.S. recessions beginning in the mid-70s. This recession brought the worst economic contraction since the Great Depression. 
Precipitated by a housing bubble which burst, U.S. stocks were only 2.7% overvalued when it began. Nonetheless, stocks proceeded to sink, ultimately losing 53.78% from peak to trough. By the time it ended, stocks had recouped about 14% of the loss, ending the recession down 40% from its October 9, 2007 peak. Other noteworthy items include a record high close on the VIX of 80.86, November 20, 2008. The VIX measures the expected volatility of the S&P 500 index over the next 30 days. The yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury also fell to an all-time low during this period, dropping nearly 70% from 5.26% June 12, 2007 to 2.08% December 18, 2008. This recession was relatively mild. It began 13 months after the tech bubble burst and lasted 8 months. It was worsened by the 9-11 tragedy which occurred 6 weeks before the recession ended. Stocks bottomed twice during this recession, once March 24th and again September 21st. After each bottom, the Dow rose about 16% before hitting a new low. Stocks didn't hit their ultimate bottom until October 9, 2002, almost a year after the recession. From its peak, January 14, 2000, to its ultimate bottom on October 9, 2002, stocks fell about 38%. About a year before the recession began, stocks were 49% overvalued, which was a record high. When the recession began, due to the bursting of the tech bubble, this overvaluation had fallen to 9.5%. A year after the recession, stocks were about 33% undervalued, setting the stage for the longest economic expansion and bull market in U.S. history. On January 26, 2018, stocks were 49.4% overvalued, breaking the previous record. Two short years later, February 19, 2020, another record was set when stocks became 58.9% overvalued. Although the VIX spiked to 43.74% during this recession, it rose even higher after it ended. The 10-year Treasury also fell slightly. The 1990 recession lasted the same length of time as the 2001 recession but was more severe. Stocks trended higher in the eight years prior and peaked two weeks after the recession began. Early in the recession, stock declined, losing 26% until bottoming October 11, 1990. During this decade, stock markets soared until the tech bubble burst in March 2000. The fear index was only a few months old at this point and topped out at 36.47, August 23, 1990. The 10-year Treasury also fell slightly. And with that, we've reached the end of this video all about recessions and stocks and what history tells us. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this video helpful and interesting. See you again soon in the next one.